Karen Morn is back after having covered that story in court for us. Karen, not entirely surprising, as you noted the other day, that Johan Kortzer did get a life sentence, more than one. Well, bizarrely enough, and the, the judge actually pointed out this in, the, in his sentence um, judgment today, the lawyers for both Johan Kortzer and his co-accused had argued that the rape that Ina Bornat suffered was not the worst kind of rape, and that, in fact, the judge should sort of consider that when he passed his sentence and the judge in his in his ruling looked at their their reasons and just said I absolutely cannot understand why you would make this argument because psychologically what this woman went through he described you know she's bound she's gagged these men are approaching her she's gang raped she is mutilated um, her breasts are so badly mutilated that he said she will forever be marked as a woman which is exactly what Johann Kortzer wanted so he said literally and if you're going to put a, an argument about degrees of rape this is one of the worst rapes that any woman could experience. And Karen Kotsu had been so confident up until a couple of days ago that he'd be acquitted how's he digested the events of the last few days? It's very interesting to me because right in the beginning of this case when he first appeared in the Mori Mori magistrates court you saw this impassive stony um, kind of exterior who wouldn't react very much giving the impression that you know he was this detached emotionally disturbed person and as the case progressed and he thought it was going his way, he became more sort of charismatic, engaging with his teenage daughter and her friends, laughing, joking, blowing kisses to his various girlfriends who've been supporting him throughout this hearing and family members. And as this, you know, sort of becoming more and more, sort of coming more out of his shell and actually greeting the journalists and saying, every morning. Now, you know, obviously the writing's on the wall and we see a massive recession back into that sort of withdrawn personality. He did come out yesterday and say he was going to give a press conference. He was going to give his side of this uh, story without sensation, he said. But I think his lawyers and the court may have stopped him from doing that because immediately when that decision was passed, he was down the stairs and, and, and exiting the court building. And, and of course he will appeal, is it the verdict and the sentence? Yes, both. Because, I mean, his lawyers are going to persist with this argument that he was a psychologically, he is a psychologically disturbed person, has suffered childhood abuse and trauma, developed a narcissistic personality disorder, which is of course the new way, the more uh, appropriate way of describing a psychopath. Um, and they're going to argue that the judge should have taken that into account in terms of the conviction and also the sentence. Of course, them arguing yesterday as lawyers that he should actually get 15 years in jail. And clearly that has not happened. I mean, what was the response of Kurtz's three accused? and their families to these sentences? Well, it was quite powerful because um, Kortz's family members, I think, had resigned themselves to the fact that he was probably going to get a fairly hefty sentence. But one of uh, Andrew Satorle's wife and his mother were in court today. And as, you know, that sentence was given out and the judge walked out, the one, the one lady, I think it was his wife, actually started wailing and sort of lay down on the court bench and rocked back and forth. A massive, massive levels of, uh, of shock registering for the family members of their co-accused and I think that you know there may be while I don't necessarily think that Johan Kortze stands any hope of a successful appeal against his conviction and sentence I think for the co-accused um, particularly Pieter Motlake and Franz and Parker there may be a glimmer of hope in terms of terms of challenging their convictions and sentences. Ina Bonnet's response? Very, very emotional, um, you know, spoke immediately after the decision. She'd been very fearful about Johan Kortz's promised press conference. She actually said to me that she had real fears that he would again humiliate her, again make allegations about her character and what kind of woman she was. So I think there was massive relief about the sentence, but also the fact that he didn't get the opportunity to do that. Um, in tears, and she, she, had, she had the most amazing, I had an interview with her um, sort of a half an hour after the furore, after the sentence had passed. And I asked her, what are you going to do now? I mean, what does life hold for Ina Bonnet? And she said, you know, there's so much promise, but today my daughter and I are going to the grave of my son and I'm going to be quiet with him and I'm going to tell him that justice has been served. It's a very sad story indeed. Does she fear what the, the possible outcome of an appeal could be if it goes in Johan Kortz's favour? I think she's massively emotionally invested in this case and I think for Ina Bonnet and um, this case because her credibility was so attacked and her character was so attacked 
that any kind of victory by Kotsa or his co-accused in terms of an appeal would be quite devastating to her. Um, you know, she said today that she knows who she is, she knows what kind of person she is, and throughout the sort of slings and arrows that she was forced to face, she had to sort of hold herself steadfast. But I mean, we know from speaking to people like Dirk van der Maver, Kotsa's former best friend, that she has suffered a huge amount of public uh, judgment. She herself was talking today about people sending her very malicious mem uh, messages on social networks. So this woman has suffered immensely. She was massively disfigured. She's had breast reconstruction. She has had, you know, massive psychological problems. She has lost her teenage son. So I think for Ina Bonnet, and she says this consistently, every day is, is a journey in itself towards her recovery and towards in some way or another coming to terms with what's happened to her and helping other women go, go, who are going through the same thing. Karen Morn, thanks very much for putting us in the picture there. News that moves. ENCA.com